What's up everybody, Jose once again from PetRockMedia.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Canon EOS R3, not to be confused with the R1 rumors, and some new sports lenses that we're going to be getting hopefully here in the next coming months that are rumored currently right now, some of them having diffractive optics instead of the L-series style of optics. We're going to make a little bit more sense about that here in a bit. Let's talk about it. Right, everybody welcome back to the channel if this type of content is something that you're interested in do me a favor hit that subscribe button punch that bell icon so you'll be notified each and every time we post content to the channel or go live so if you follow canon news um this r3 announcement uh which dropped today which is april the 13th um which some people would call a bad omen because it is the 13th love the number 13 is one of my favorite if, if not my favorite most lucky number but being april the 13th and getting this type of, of kind of news bomb of the R3 announcement or potential upcoming announcement, future announcement, kind of caught a lot of us off guard because we hadn't really heard about it, right? We heard about the R1. We heard about the R1 becoming Canon's flagship camera. And then all of a sudden, the R3 is kind of rumored and announced. <clears throat> and then you start thinking, well, what happened to the R1? Especially when you look at some of the leaked pictures as you can see here, it looks oddly similar to the R1, uh, besides, you know, the color shift in the image and things like that, the white balance. Um, the body layouts look exactly the same. So that leads you to believe, is the R3 real? Is the R1 real? Which one's going to be the latest release? Which one's going to be the legit camera moving forward that Canon labels as their flagship? Or, because of the body styles, is the 1DX lineups of the past, which is what this camera essentially looks like, but in mirrorless RF mount, are these bodies going to go the way of the 5D bodies? And what I mean by that is when you looked at Canon's older releases, right? There was the 5D Mark 1, 2, 3, and so forth. And then there was the 6D and the 6D and then 7D and so forth. But the 6D, in my opinion, was revolutionary because it was a full frame camera. It was a little bit cheaper and it offered similar specs, of course, some of the, the better specs being referred or reserved for the R5 body. But it's very similar to the um, the current right now of R5 and R6 lineup. And in the fact that the R6 is a cheaper little brother of the R5, boasting some pretty good specs as well, but lower megapixels, um, lower frame rates for video, things like that. So could these new R1s, R3s, and so forth be kind of going the way of that kind of release. And maybe the R3 is going to be the next best thing and the next flagship model. Back in the day, the 5Ds were kind of like, before you moved into the 1DXs, the 5Ds were pretty much the best prosumer style of body. And then the 5D was replaced. Well, not really replaced, but it kept going up, you know, and you can still currently buy like the 5D Mark IVs and so forth. But then there was the 6D, which had similar specs, but not everything kind of loaded like the Canon 5D had. Then you look at the R5 and the R6. So could the 1D body styles of mirrorless bodies, which it looks like it's going to be the R1 and maybe R3, could they be going the same numbering route as that? The, you know, the R3 potentially having the, the latest and greatest in that 1DX style of body with the built-in battery grip and so forth, but still have the R1 in development as being the super flagship in that body style. Now, this isn't something that we're used to from Canon. Usually the 1DX is the larger bodies kind of just stayed, but who knows how Canon is going to start marketing when you're looking at them completely, in my opinion, shifting to their mirrorless bodies. They're going to start providing you with better, um, more consumer professional style of bodies like the 1DXs, but then still having the R5s and the R6s. Um, and then, you know, the RCs when they come out and things like that, those bodies are kind of geared more towards the prosumer kind of, uh, consumers and customers so it's very interesting um it's confusing but it is pretty interesting we don't have a lot of specs you know obviously we're going to probably see some type of video specs you know 4k 8k kind of thing um overheating should be addressed in these bodies as they are bigger they are larger they allow for more heat to kind of leave the camera and allow you to have a better experience when shooting at those higher video rates 
most likely this is going to have incredibly fast autofocus and incredibly fast uh, frames per second you know 20 plus i'm almost almost going to guarantee that kind of rivaling the sony um, a1 so looking at that potentially dual uh, sensors depending on the sensor that Canon's going to use utilizing those dual sensors to have faster readouts you know kind of kind of things like that can to compete with the uh, Nikon Z9 and the Sony A1 so again stay tuned to the channel hit that subscribe button as we hear more about these camera releases and especially the R3 and potentially the R1 we will drop the news here on this channel so again be sure you hit that subscribe button and then moving on to some lenses that Canon is going to be released hopefully soon are some of these sport lenses, which again is where I'm going to kind of go out on a limb here and say that this is why Canon is discontinuing a lot of their older lenses because they're making way for these RF lenses, which are geared more towards mirrorless, which would then lean, lead yourself to believe that their new R3 and R1 bodies are going to be, you know, their new flagship cameras and hopefully be released soon. Um, but we're looking at a 400 millimeter f4 do lens which is uh canon's green ringed lenses which stands for diffractive optics which kind of leans itself to kind of borrow the l series style of lens super professional super high quality super amazing glass but it's got some different technology in there that allows it to have lesser lens groups and lens elements but still providing some pretty amazing results so we're looking at having a 400 millimeter f4 usm lens and they're also looking at a 200 to 500 f4 l series lens usm lens as well now both of them appear to be uh, image stabilized as well which is going to go great with the r5 r6 and especially these new bodies which i'm going to pretty much guarantee that these new camera bodies whether it be the r3 or the r1 will have some pretty incredible in-body image stabilization compare that and combine that with is on the lenses you're going to have an incredible handheld experience from canon with these new lenses but that wraps up this video everybody let me know in the comments what you think about these current rumors right now and current potential releases from canon are you on board with the fact that the r3 could be real or do you think this is just a little smoke and mirrors to kind of delay maybe the r1 i'm almost certain that these two cameras are real but again who knows you know canon could completely say no this was the r1 it was just misunderstood whatever uh, but again let me know down in the comments thank each and every one of you for stopping on by i greatly appreciate everybody's support and i'll catch every one of you beautiful human beings in the next video peace